Cowboys have their new player, Bobby. You loved what they did. I did. I um, this is to me. You've got to. You've got to. I, I was completely comfortable losing Guyton and Barton if you traded down. I was completely losing every player that you had in mind. You wanted four different guys. If you lost all four. I'm fine with it to be honest. Really? Because you need to move down, you need capital. Yeah. This seems not spending, and you have to replenish this roster somehow. If you want to be even remotely competitive, you need four or five picks in the first hundred. And yeah, so, but you want to move down for someone that you've honed in on. You don't want to do all this work and then say, we like these four, and then get your fish. Sure, but they clearly at this point, they said, we don't have any first-round grades left. I don't believe Tyler Guyton was a first-round grade for them. I believe right. he was a second. Steven said they had 15 first round grades and they all got drafted. So I, they, they were talking about a high second round pick. Yeah. So if you tell me I can you're have, tiered. you're tiered at that yeah, point. You, and they're like, okay. If you told me I can have a high second round pick and two third round graded players, for instance, or you tell me I can move back, miss that person, get four different draft picks. And then all of a sudden I'm looking at having three second round picks and a third in terms of the players I've graded that to me, even if it's not a high second round pick, the discrepancy between high second round pick and three mid second round picks to me is not enough of one to pitch a fit over. That's what I couldn't understand last night about. I sat here and told you guys I wanted Barton, but yeah. like, to me, it was like, I want capital more. Like I want, I want to be able, and, and if they were comfortable Darts. enough, the way that they, yeah, the way that they evaluate offensive line historically if they were comfortable enough to say, we'll walk away from Graham Barton because we want the picks more, then you don't love him enough to tell me that, well, we just can't trade out of this. Right. I, I don't think they would have traded out of this. If if Troy Fatanu didn't get drafted by Pittsburgh at 20, if he would have been there, I don't think they trade. That's, that, the that's a guy they have. A, I think that was somebody they had a first round grade on. And so that was that was one that I think was tough for them. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the, the process or plan of like trading down, and I, I think what happened, I think we're, we're all kind of looking at it the same way. They had hit a tier where they're like, all right, there's a bunch of guys in this tier of player. It may not be individually ranked the way we were wanting it to, but if we drop down a player or two, they're on the same tier. We're just like, we're circumcising mosquitoes, as Jerry would say. <laughs> so let's pick up the extra top 100 pick, and let's just take another player. And it's just another dart, and it's the same size dart, and the weight of the dart's the same. And if he hits, he hits. If he doesn't, look, we still could go to sleep tomorrow knowing that we did the right thing. Yeah, even if they lost him, I would yeah. have been fine with it. But they there didn't. Corners on the, there was corners on the board. They could have taken one of them. Yeah, they didn't lose him, and they would have taken him at 24. Like, like they would have been comfortable taking If they wouldn't have been able to bail out, and I think they would have probably leaned Barton over Guyton if they were sitting there and both picks were there. But it's close enough that if Barton hadn't been there, they would have taken... I, I think they absolutely would have taken And I'll tell you what, I think Mike Solari even if Barton is on the board, is probably pounding the table and saying, give me the tackle, not the center. Because I think he believes Brock Hoffman can start right now. And so he views it as redundant. And so... You had texted us early on in the night that the sense you're getting is trade down. I know we, Jerry... we had heard walking in there last night, 80% chance they were trading down. Oh, wow. Well. So they were looking for it. They were they were looking for it. And that's, that's honestly what you need to do. If you cannot... If you're telling me you can't sign anybody, you're, you're literally telling me that... Believe it or not, if you're literally telling me you are so handcuffed that you can't sign players to $3 million contracts, okay, well, then I need all the the cheap, like, good talent I can find. If you want the scouting staff to pull a rabbit out of their head, Jason Witten style, if you want them to do that, then you need to give them enough capital to where they can do it for you. Am I, this could be deliriousness from the entire week. Something about Detroit got involved, had a better offer, but they got involved too late. Am I misremembering that? Detroit, as Detroit, Detroit did, Detroit did make the trade with them. Detroit made the trade. Okay. Yeah, Detroit, and Detroit overpaid. You, the, the, well, if you look yeah, at the, they should have gotten the fourth, right? If you, if you look at the trade value chart, um, or like a high fourth, but I mean, obviously Detroit doesn't have that. But I mean... They give them a high third. Jumping up, uh, it was like a mid third. Yeah, so if you jump up five spots for a mid third, back in the first round, that's a... I was completely fine if they wanted to trade again. They were on the phone working the phones for a trade at 29, too. But they ultimately said, no, we'll stand in here and pick because they didn't get the right value for it. But no, that was, it's great value for it. You're now picking four times in the top 100. That you, Losing that fourth round pick doesn't sting nearly as bad. Still would probably rather have a fourth round pick than Trey Lance at this point. But they they are in a position to 
at least replenish the talent pool a little bit now. And there was a concern that they didn't have enough darts, like you said, to be able to do that. Tell us about the player. So he is, I mean, if you want to talk about like built in a lab, like the way somebody looks like, you know, build me the most freakish looking tackle you can, it would look like Tyler Guyton. He is incredibly raw. Like there's still a lot of times where you watch him and you're just like, he's still figuring out how to use his length. He's still figuring out how to use his hands. Um, but man, he is great instincts, mauler mentality. It is honestly, it's very similar to where Tyler Smith was at when they picked him. And I'll even go further and say Tyler Smith, I don't think was as far along in the process as Guyton is right now. So Guyton is more advanced than Tyler Smith was when they picked him. I, I still would be interested. Is this and an I, instant starter? No, and see, uh, I, I loved last night. People were blowing up my Twitter mentions late last night as I, as, as I was going to bed. People saying, ooh, hot mic. Heard you on the hot mic there at the end of the draft. It's like, I was playing. That was going to be the first line in my prep email was, I don't know. I'm going to be interested to see if Guyton starts year one. To me, Tyler Smith does not start in 2022 unless Tyron Smith gets hurt. I mean, do you remember we were all talking about why in the world is Connor McGovern getting all the snaps at guard? I thought they wanted Tyler Smith to get these snaps. Mm -hmm. Why Why is he not immediately plug and play? And he was only plug and play once they lost Tyron right. because they didn't want to put all that trust in a rookie right away. And so I get I, it. And so it just, I wonder with a guy who's raw, even if he's more advanced than I think Tyler Smith was coming out of school, with a guy who's raw, do you want to put your jobs on the line in the hands of a rookie right away? I still think, I think he's going to be a Pro Bowl player at tackle. It's just, he might take a little bit of time. So I don't know that he's going to be plug and play necessarily, but he doesn't have to be in my opinion. All right, let me go over two this morning with my memory. Was this the one Wolchuk was saying yesterday in the preview that he would, he, he was not high on? He is well, not he as high on Guyton. least want. Out of the, the trio we were talking about of like Fatanu, Barton, Guyton, he was not as high on Guyton. Um, but Brian really likes Guyton. I really like Guyton. Guyton, I mean, I had him, uh, when I was driving in and I heard you say where Dane, I had him the exact same spot Dane did. He was, he was player 24 for me. So, I mean, that was right where you were picking. He made sense. There, there's a lot of people who who rave about him. He comes on, he immediately drops an f bomb on Zach Wolchuk when we're interviewing him after the uh, after the pick. Um, but that's a guy who is all the tools, all the traits. They have shown consistently. If you look over the last couple of years, and you think who are the traits guys that they've picked? Like who are the guys who it's like, well, the upside's there. What, how how much of a true football player are they? And you think back and you go. Okay, Tyler Smith, Trayvon Diggs, Micah Parsons. Like, they've hit on the guys who they know. They, they've got a pretty good track record of figuring out which guys have the capacity to put it together and which guys don't. And so, Guyton, to me, I felt good about his ability to put it together. Now I feel great about his ability to put it together, knowing that the scouting staff that works on him and evaluates him and sees what the work ethic is and how he takes coaching, that they evaluated and said, yes, we will spend a first-round pick on this. What type of kid is he supposed to be, Bobby? Oh, he's supposed to be, like, the the... The same sort of stuff we heard about Tyler Smith, where it's like, oh, this is a hard worker, very charismatic kid, takes to coaching well, takes to instruction well. Those are the kind of things you can't know without being, you know, hands on and, and working those areas and, and being on top of those players. That was what the Vikings got wrong on Laquan Treadwell years ago. Laquan Treadwell was one of the highest graded players. He got there and he literally couldn't learn their playbook. And it was not something more complex than just the NFL, Minnesota got there and was like, we missed on the evaluation of how he was going to be able to take to teaching and coaching and things like that. That's why it's important to have like really good scouts who are on top of knowing who these players are and how teachable they are. And that's everything you hear about Guyton is that he's willing, quick learner, and is completely committed to getting better. The